friends, I want to welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to this worship service. This is a special worship when we gather to uh, remember the story of the crucifixion of Jesus. We call it Good Friday, uh, even though it is a story of brokenness, of human cruelty, of death, we know that in the midst of it, there is the goodness of God. There is the goodness of love, of life, where Jesus stayed faithful till the end to his mission of love. And so this evening, we are focusing on one particular scene in the story, and that is the encounter between Jesus and the two uh, thieves on his sides, uh, where he was uh, crucified. They were also on crosses. And so uh, we will listen to the, to the words, but especially the one thief where there was an encounter of deep connection and love and forgiveness. And so this evening, the theme is focusing on love, unconditional love. And uh, I want to uh, share with you that the song that will be uh, the focus of this evening is uh, called Love Heals. It is based on this book by Becca Stevens. Uh, the book is called Love Heals. And so uh, the story behind this is that Becca Stevens was the founder of Thistle Farms. And you can look that uh, look them up and see their work uh, with women who were survivors of abuse, of addiction. And so they, uh, they have found this community and their business model is love, unconditional love. And so thinking of that uh, song this evening, it kind of fits what uh, Jesus did to uh, the thief on, the, on his side uh, by giving him that unconditional love. And so this evening, I want to begin with a quote from Thomas Kempis about love, especially the love of God. Love is a mighty power, a great and complete good. Love alone lightens every burden and makes the rough places smooth. It bears every hardship as though it were nothing and renders all bitterness sweet and acceptable. The love of Jesus is noble and inspires us to great deeds. It moves us always to desire perfection. Nothing is sweeter than love, nothing stronger, nothing higher, nothing wider, nothing more pleasant, nothing fuller or better in heaven or on earth. For love is born of God and can rest only in God above all created things. And so this is uh, the focus this evening uh, is on the goodness of God's love and the unconditional quality of, of that love. And so I invite you to prepare your hearts by taking a deep breath and being present to this moment in prayer. God, we thank you for your presence in our lives, for the gift of unconditional love this evening, as we come remembering a story of pain, of suffering, we pray that we may also remember the goodness that was present there, the love, the life-giving love that Jesus gave, even on the cross. Help us to live by these values of love, of kindness, of compassion, of following the path of self-giving. Wherever we are on this journey of faith, help us to see our place in and through your love. Amen.
After three years of ministry, Jesus headed into Jerusalem. This was a festival time. There was a time of great expectations for his ministry, for the culmination of his ministry, that he was going to be the Messiah. He was going to be the one to liberate the people from the oppression of the Romans. But there, Jesus' way of love encountered the cruelty of human fear. Uh, people were so threatened by his message that they crucified him. Today I want to focus on the thief on his side uh, or the criminal, it depends on the tradition, uh, who was uh, very interested in being accepted by Jesus. And so let's listen uh, to, to this message from Luke 23. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. This was one of the criminals saying that to him. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right, because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. What came to my mind as I thought of this story and the interaction and the acceptance of Jesus is becoming eligible. How do we become eligible? This word eligible has become uh, so important in the last few months for, for us after the vaccine came out. Think about it. We've all been anxious to get to that point of being eligible to receive the vaccine or to receive benefits or whatever it is, being eligible implies that you have to meet certain conditions and certain rules. That's how most of us think in life. We think of being eligible, uh, doing things so we could become lovable or we could earn our way through life. But in this story of love, the logic of love is different. The logic of love that Jesus presented in this story to us, even on the cross, he was still teaching an incredible story of love. This thief or criminal who had no um, connection to any conditions or becoming eligible to enter the kingdom of God with Jesus was invited in. And that's the power of, of this uh, evening for us. This story is all about unconditional love. We don't have to earn our way. We don't have to be good in order for God to love us. We don't have to believe a certain cert set of things. We don't have to do anything. In this story, we see Jesus accepting this man as he is. And that's very challenging for us and yet very hopeful. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that anything goes, but it does mean that love is the foundation of who we are. And God's love is always expanding our vision of love. God's love is always more inclusive than we can ever imagine. And so on this, on this uh, journey of faith, especially when we think of the cross, we think of that acceptance, we think of that way of self-giving, that was open till the end, that Jesus stayed faithful to openness and didn't to dwell on what the one uh, thief was saying, uh, mocking him and, and making fun of him, but Jesus focused on the one who was open to receive the gift of love. And so this evening, I wanna share with you a story uh, that is, it's a legend. Um, it's by Raymond Arroyo, and it's called The Thief Who Stole Heaven. And, and the invitation of this story is to imagine this uh, scene, the encounter, and what that might have looked like, and uh, imagine that, that incredible touch of, of the power of the divine when we encounter something that grips us. Uh, and 
moves us beyond the conditions and the barriers that we put on love, life is changed. And so let's listen to the story together. Dismas was a thief, a member of a wandering band of robbers who prowled the Judean desert looking for easy prey. Abandoned by his parents, the boy fell into the hands of a gang that raised him in their ways. He didn't want to steal or hurt anyone, but to eat and to avoid a beating by Gistas, his leader, the boy did as he was told. And it came to pass that Dismas was ordered to rob a widow by pushing her into the street and taking her money. Once the deed was done, the widow's kitten followed the boy into an alley where he counted the stolen coins. Feeling guilty, he tenderly cared for the kitten as if it were his own. When Gustas discovered Dismas feeding the tiny cat, he became furious. You soft idiot, he fumed. That thing produces nothing. Mercy is a great weakness, boy. Gestas grabbed the cat by the throat and Dismas never saw it again. Time hardened Dismas. Not only did he become the most feared bandit in Judea, but he was so cruel and quick with a blade that the thieves began calling him the Prince of Death. Now one night, while Gestas and the others slept, Dismas spied a rich merchant on a camel bouncing down the highway. He silently slipped from the thieves' cave, carrying only his knife. Within minutes, the merchant was no more. Dismas took charge of the camel and six small sacks of gold, which he greedily stuffed into his pockets. The braying camel woke Gestas. Where do you get the creature? asked the old thief, standing in the dark mouth of the cave. It came wandering by, Dismas lied. We can sell it for a hefty price. And behold, over a nearby hill, there came a man with a lamp, leading a donkey. Atop it sat a woman tightly bundling her baby against the cool night air. We are highly favored, Gistus. Dismas smiled his crooked smile, touching his blade once more. The night brings us yet another prize. Dismas leapt onto the highway, blocking the traveler's path. Welcome to my kingdom, he crowed. The thief's greeting startled the donkey, but not the woman on its back. The brawny man leading the party raised his staff and glared at the thief. Save your strength, Dismas snarled, flashing his knife and going straight to the saddlebags. What have we here? Only a child, the man responded. Do you think I care about you or your child? Rummaging through the saddlebags, Dismas glanced up at the beautiful woman with skin like silk. She softly kissed the feet of the infant in her arms and pressed her head against his tiny toes. Then the child, ever so slowly, turned his face toward Dismas, looking him squarely in the eyes. The thief froze with fear and amazement. Who is this child? Who is he? He begged the woman. Dismas couldn't tear his gaze from the baby's piercing eyes. Mary said nothing. She covered the child's face with her mantle and serenely lowered her head. When he looked at me, Dismas sputtered, those eyes. Have mercy on us, Joseph said softly. Just then, Gestas yelled from the roadside, Have they anything worth taking? Do you need my help? Have I ever needed your help? Dismas answered. Then to Mary he whispered, Let me see your child again, and I'll do you no harm. Mary looked to Joseph, who nodded his approval. Gently, she lifted her blue veil, and behold, the child was already staring at Dismas alone and he was smiling. The thief felt such shame, shame for what he'd done even moments ago, and amazement at the light and purity he saw in the child's eyes. Awestruck, Dismas stretched out his hand to touch the baby. The child gripped the thief's finger with the strength of a man. Hairs bristled on Dismas' arms 
and at the back of his neck. He tried to pull away, but could not. In panic and wonder, he murmured to the child, If ever a time should come when I need your mercy, remember me. The babe released Dismas' finger, and Mary swallowed him once more. Let it be done to you according to your word, she whispered. Well, what do they have? Gistus shouted. Treasure of great worth, yelled Dismas as he fished the merchant's coin bags from his pockets. He tossed one to Gistus. I've taken the best these travelers have. That's our prince, laughed Gistus. No mercy at all. Go now, Dismas ordered Joseph under his breath. Be on your way. Then to Mary, do not forget what has passed this day. She smiled at him, gently lowering her head, and the family continued down the road to Egypt. For years thereafter, Dismas often thought of the child he had spared on the road to Egypt. No one had ever looked at him in such a way. But over time, the lures of the world, gold, power, and the violence used to secure them, blotted out all memory of the child and the bright moment they shared on that cold winter's night. And it came to pass that Dismas descended deeper into his wicked ways. He mercilessly robbed and hurt many people until one day, 33 years later, Dismas and Gistus were arrested by the Romans. Soldiers dragged the two thieves before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. He sentenced them along with another prisoner, a preacher from Nazareth. By the time Dismas saw the preacher, the Roman guards had beaten him horribly. Dismas could not believe how still, even peaceful, the preacher remained throughout his sufferings. The two thieves and the preacher were forced to carry heavy crosses up the hill where they would face their final punishment. Women on the roadside wept as the wounded preacher passed silently by. Jesus, the women cried, Rabbi, Master, but others screamed, Blasphemer, if you are the Messiah, save yourself. And where are your angels to save you now? Who is this Jesus? Dismas wondered, dragging his cross behind the man. Who is he? On a dusty hilltop, soldiers fixed the three men to their crosses. Dismas had never known such pain. The blinding sun made it impossible for him to even open his eyes. Then, as the light shifted, the shadow of Jesus fell upon Dismas, and for the first time on the cross, the thief could see. A woman in a dark blue veil approached the preacher's cross and kissed his feet. She rested her forehead against them, speaking in a hush. Dismas knew this woman, this mother. He raised his glance to the face of the preacher, Jesus was already staring at Dismas alone. Those eyes, you are the child grown. You remember me. The crowd pressed in, jeering at Jesus. He saved others. Let him save himself. Come down from the cross and we will believe that you are the Messiah. The Roman soldiers mocked Jesus with false bows, threw trash at him, and shouted, All hail the King of the Jews! Save yourself! Jesus looked heavenward, and Dismas heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Gistus, on the other side of Jesus, took up the chants of the crowd, yelling, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us! Shocked at Gistus, Dismas shouted back at him, Do you not fear God? We have been rightly punished for the things we have done. We are getting what we deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. You're a soft fool, Gistus shrieked. An idiot. Then gazing at the innocent man next to him, beyond the bruises, Dismas suddenly saw the child again. And all his pain vanished. Warmth filled his being. The wicked things he had done over so many years fell away, and Dismas saw only those eyes. Jesus, he sobbed, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
Mary smiled up at him, just as she had so long ago. Jesus turned to Dismas and said, Truly I tell you, this day you will be with me in paradise. Dismas was a thief to the end, never forgetting his trade. Before kings and prophets, apostles and saints, Dismas was the first to break through the gates of paradise. For hanging on a cross with nothing but his words and faith, he stole heaven from God himself. And so friends, I invite you this evening to ponder this story, the story of God's love for us. So friends, I invite you this evening to open your heart to this kind of love, to ponder it, to believe it, to practice it. And so we are going to uh, take a few moments and listen to the words of, of this story, but with Alexio Divina. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to read this story three times and I'm going to invite you to listen for something different each time. The first reading, I'm going to invite you to listen to a word or a phrase that will shimmer for you. The second reading, I'm going to invite you to uh, pay attention to a feeling that will come to you around your word or phrase. The third time, I'm going to invite you to uh, pay attention to a message that will come to you. So the invitation of this is to uh, let go and to let the Holy Spirit speak to you uh, through the words, through the silence, uh, whatever comes to you, honor it and receive it as a gift. So take a deep breath. You may want to close your eyes and focus on this moment. Be present. Let go of all that is holding you back. And listen. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. Now the second reading, and this time paying attention to a feeling around your word or phrase. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right, because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. And now the third reading, and this time paying attention to a message that will come to you. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence he did. Ours, however, is only right, because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. We 
We thank you, O oh God, for this message of love that we have received this evening, the reminder of your acceptance of your way. Help us as we remember your cross and the cruelty of humanity that we may turn to your love to shape us, to help us to transform the world around us, but especially the world within us. For we pray this in the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. Here's the blessing. May the Lord of love lead you from death to life, from falsehood to truth, from despair to hope, from fear to trust, from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, and our universe, this day and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.